What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, John from the Gambito here, welcoming you to the Week 6 Power Rankings of the NFL. And honestly, Week 6 was, or Week 5, excuse me, was an interesting week in the NFL. And lots, lots, <laughs> lots happened. Um, between, you know, the Eagles actually competing with the, you know, Steelers and a couple other things that happened, like, to be fair... It was a good week for a lot of these teams. Like, it was a very good week. We had some fun games. We had a game go into overtime that was unexpected. So, honestly, with all that being said, I want to go ahead and, you know, head in to this week's power rankings. If it, this will let me. <laughs> uh, I usually have my uh, other, my, uh, the scores up to update and reference. Uh, because, you know, I don't. Remember the scores of every game, <laughs> sadly. Uh, 32nd, let's be obvious, it's the Jets. You get blown out again for the fifth consecutive game, uh, or the fifth game out of five, and you're going to just, you know, be 32nd because every team is beating you by at least 10 points, except for the Broncos. <laughs> like, if you play the Jets and don't beat them by 10 there's a scary, that's a scary, you have to beat the Jets by double digits, um, and the Cardinals did that, so, 30 second, <laughs> I actually watched a power rankings video the other day, of course, after I had lamented and submitted everything, and <laughs> they actually excluded the Jets from the entirety of the thing, and I'm like, that's kind of clever, because, and it was that franchise guy, by the way, that did that, and it was just hilarious, the fact that, you know, <laughs> just, let's just take out the Jets. Jets aren't even a, a team. They're not competent. Uh, they're on a tier of their own. <laughs> uh, next, we have the New York Giants. And, you know, I debated moving this team up. I really did. Um, they played really well against the Cowboys. This Cowboys defense is terrible. I kind of want to see a little more from them before I'm like oh they're better than the Broncos especially with the Broncos being on by this week which will actually just go ahead and let them let you guys know Broncos are 30 um I don't like shifting teams on the buy unless there's been a massive change in the NFL um and so I think it'll be awesome to see kind of both these teams battle it out but the Giants actually look like a competent football team yes they're 0-5 um but they did look good, so I'm hoping they continue to get better throughout the season. I mean, they have a they're one of the 0 and five teams that actually have a shot at the playoffs somehow. Um, but yeah, so 30 is the uh, the Broncos on a bye. They're having some issues on their own. Melvin Gordon getting a DUI, other things like that. I'll be interested to see how they go next. The first team that actually drops in the power rankings, Jacksonville. <sighs> I chose them to beat the Texans. I didn't think that Romeo Clornell um, would be able to get this team ready. Props to Romeo. He got this team ready against a divisional opponent and beat them by 16. They, I think, fell back to earth. Uh, they were doing really, really good for really no reason. And I was, I thought that I was just wrong on this team after their first two weeks of the season. Um, but I guess I'm not. I, yeah, no, I thought, I thought that their first week of the season, like, really lifted them up. They were going to do good. And, nope, they've fallen apart at this point. So they are 29 uh, with down three. The next team gets to stay where they are, the Atlanta Falcons. Atlanta I believe Atlanta What uh, played, yeah, they played a divisional opponent in the Panthers. They kept up with them, but their offense showed some woes for the second consecutive week that you don't want to see if you're the Falcons, right? Because the Falcons have been, like, live and die on their defense, which their defense actually did pretty good, keeping the Panthers to 23. Um, and, like, that's the lowest amount of points that any team has scored on the Falcons this season. But then again, you're like, offense you need to capitalize on your defense actually decides they want to play well <laughs> like 
when your defense actually decides to keep a team under 30, you need to capitalize. And they did not. They lost, which, but I don't think they did as bad as the uh, Jaguars. So I'm going to keep them where they are at 28. But they've got a lot of work to do. They're in rebuilding mode. They fire or they fired uh, their head coach, uh, Dan Quinn. And they've got some work. And I don't know if they're going to really be able to turn it around, unfortunately. Um, I think they'll be probably in this tier the entire year. I don't really see them moving out of it without a, without a spectacular performance um, or failures from a bunch of teams above them. Next, we got the Cincinnati Bengals. They move down a singular spot after their horrendous loss to the Ravens. Again, they did not get knocked down very much. They were on the road against the Ravens team that is just really good. But, oh, like you could tell the disparity between the two teams. The Ravens offensive or defensive line just said, hello, darkness, my old friend. Um, and just dis- got destroyed, Joe Burrow did, by the terrible offensive line. Um, issues all over the board on this offense. AJ Green wants to go. It makes sense. Um, and the Bengals are just not that good. They, oh, excuse me, they are one of those teams that can compete with a lot of teams, but if you have, if they have a good offense or defensive line, you're screwed. Um, like it's bad. If they if they ha- if your opponent has a good defensive line, you're gonna lose. Um, next, we have the Washington Football Team dropping six spots. It's finally time. It's finally time that they get dropped. They lost by twenty as well to the Rams. The Rams are a good team. Don't get me wrong; they are a good team. But here's my problem with the football team: is they just have not played well this season at all. They had a great week one, and they hadn't really had a loss for like me to be like, "Oh yeah, I can drop them." And I didn't drop them that harshly against the um, Ravens, but against the Rams again losing by 20 points it's just you guys aren't there you guys aren't complete yet um you have a shot at winning the division like everybody in the AFC or NFC East so hopefully the NFC East kind of tightens up I would like to see that division be like uh, if if nobody's gonna have a winning record I at least want to see people being close I don't want to run a six and ten runaway in the division please and thank you let's not um but yeah (laughs) That's kind of where the uh, football team is at right now. 26. They, I finally dropped them. They finally hit their big. They finally got their big hit. Uh, next, we have the Houston Texans going up four spots after last week. Um, Houston, I don't think your problems are over, per se, but playing really good. I want to I want to see you guys carry that into next week um, as you go against the Titans. The Titans are going to be a very tough matchup, and if you guys can beat the Titans, then you guys are going to start proving that you're worth and proving that you could go for that seven seed. I don't see it right now. As it stands, I think that uh, the Titans are going to be a tough matchup at home like because you, know, you have to travel to Tennessee after Tennessee just won a game uh, against a really tough opponent and batter them down badly, but... Uh, I really think, I genuinely think that this team just had a tough schedule to begin the season, and then the Vikings game is where I heavily dropped them. Um, I want to see them get back into that low, like, high teens um, at some point. I hope they do, but right now I don't see it. But they had a good win to moving them up four spots. Doesn't happen very often that a team moves up four. So... Good job, them. Next, we got the Philadelphia Eagles. They move up three spots. Um, and, you know, they just, like I said, they kept up. They kept up with the Jets team that, or the, not the Jets, excuse me. Holy crap. If you kept, if you, if you did good against the Jets, you wouldn't move up at all. Um, or very little. Uh, they kept up with the, the Steelers. And, you know, a nine point loss to the Steelers is not bad. Uh, especially in Pittsburgh, 
Uh, I think this team is finally turning on the Jets. Um, <laughs> literally and figuratively. Um, and they are going to move on. They're going to do good. I think that uh, they're definitely a competitor in the NFC least. Um, but they're not doing great, that's for sure. Um, I think that, like I said, there's some problems that they need to work out. But I think that the, if they can work them out, then they'll be in a happy spot. Next, we have Dallas dropping five spots despite the win to the Giants. You beat the Giants by only three. You lose your star quarterback. There's a lot of turmoil. Um, and that sucks, right? And also, f- for the record, um, prayers for Dak because Dak was having a historic season. And then that happens. Like, and everybody talks about this Dak injury. And <laughs> I just, you know, you place him in anybody's shoes. Imagine having historic performances in the NFL or like any place for that matter. Like, if you're having a historic performance, like at your job or whatever. And then. Like, it's crazy, and they're loving the fact that you're able to do all this stuff, and then, like, you get hurt, and you can't do it, and you can't finish up anything, and then your records go away because, oh, well, you couldn't finish the season. Like, I could not imagine that ever, and I feel bad because you shouldn't have to go through that, but... And Andy Dalton is a competent quarterback. I think here's my thing. I think that Dak is a better quarterback. I, but I and I said this, and I will completely. I think Dak is a better quarterback. I think Dallas will have less turnovers. I think Dallas will be more efficient, but not. I don't. I wouldn't say that, that uh, Andy Dalton's going to be a better quarterback because there's a reason why he's the backup. But I do think they're going to be more efficient. Um, have less turnovers, uh, which will result in some lower scoring games. But I do think that their defense ultimately is going to start hurting them. Um, because like Dak was able to keep things close with his trashy defense. I don't think Andy Dalton's going to be the same. I don't think Andy Dalton can respond the way that Dak responds, um, to those situations. And I think that the Dallas Cowboys season albeit not over, I feel like it lowered the amount of wins you needed to get to win the East, because I think the Cowboys kind of had lamented it at eight. You need eight at least. Now I feel like you need six or seven <laughs> to win the East, and that's sad. That's very sad, but that is how it is. So um, Next, we have the Los Angeles Chargers moving up two. After their overtime loss to the Saints. Uh, Here's the thing. They cannot finish games. And the only reason they moved up was the losses, the big drops between the NFC least. (laughs) That's it. That's the only reason they're there. You need to be able to finish games. And if you're Herbert... That is the second consecutive game where you have had a te- uh, a lead of double digits and dropped it um, and ultimately lost the game. Yes, could things go either way if the kicker would have kicked that field goal and made it instead of shanked it? Um, yeah, obviously they'd be winning and we'd talk about how they won. But again, it's the ineptitude it's the inability to close out a game all herbert needed to do was keep the pressure on the saints and he never did that he let the saints get back in and that's a problem that i've noticed and that's a pattern that i've noticed that herbert has which is scary you don't want to see that pattern already early in the career now it is his rookie season i'm not gonna say oh my god herbert's not a franchise quarterback because herbert is definitely a franchise quarterback uh, like, you can see it. I think that it's going to be similar to a lot of these quarterback stories. First years of big oof. And then the uh, 
second, third, they do better. The 2012 season was really, I feel like, the only season where you got to see, like, rookie quarterbacks, like, excel and do well and continue to, like, just pump on the gas. Like, not very often do rookie quarterbacks lead you to a divisional round matchup against the Falcons and then nearly win if you didn't call timeout. Like... (laughs) That doesn't happen very often. So, I mean, I just got to say that. I like. I feel like it's going to be like, I feel like Herbert's going to be kind of like that Josh Allen story where his team just gets better. Next year, he they make it somewhere in the playoffs potentially, and then the year after, they just kill it. Um, enough about the Chargers, though, as uh, we have the 49ers, 21, dropping five. Garoppolo sucked. Plain and simple, Garoppolo played like trash against the Dolphins. They lost 43-17. to That is unacceptable at home against the Dolphins. I am sorry, 49ers. I am upset because I wanted our entire division to be 3-2, and two, but uh, here we are. Not that. Um, so, yeah. So, honestly, oh, my God. The 49ers played like trash. And if they continue to do that, then that's just going to hurt their team. I, I hope that they pick it up but i mean yeah that's a big yikes for this team and they need to they need to play well they need to play better uh then we got the vikings moving up three spots after their near win against the seattle seahawks let's talk about the one play that prevented them from moving up further the fourth down i don't under I like I I understand that call, right? As a Vikings fan, I understand the call to go for it on fourth and one or fourth and inches, like it's fourth and a half a yard, and try because if you get it, you win. Because I think Seattle had one timeout remaining. So they don't necessarily, what's sad, like, and I think about it, it's 40 seconds, 80 seconds, you knock out 120, so yeah, it's two minutes, you, you win. Um, and, right, so you have 100% chance of victory. Or, you turn it to Russell Wilson to do what Russell Wilson did. And, if you go up by eight, you turn it to Russell Wilson. You can't lose the game in regulation. It's impossible to do that. And then you go into overtime. And yeah, does Russell have that shot of getting uh, the two point conversion, going to overtime, winning the coin toss? Like, they have to w- then win the coin toss. They have to go down and score a touchdown, or you win the coin toss. You go down and score a touchdown, because one of the teams is going to score a touchdown in overtime if we got there. Um, Like, which then turns it into a 50-50 situation. And, like I said, I get both calls. Personally, how I would have done it, this is not even a hindsight thing, I was out here watching this with my uncle, and I'm like, are you serious? They're actually going for it? Because I have, I, I don't know if you if you, if you have watched me play Madden, I have this conservative approach where I want to take the points when I get them. Um, and if I get into a position for points, I'm taking the points all the way. Unless, <coughs> excuse me, I'm on like the one yard line. Um, and I'm down, obviously. If I was down, I would be trying to go for it, because, of course, you have to. Um, like, duh. Um, but I, yeah, I would have taken the points. I would have challenged Russell Wilson to get that two-point conversion, because that's another play they have to get. That's another play you're forcing the team to make. Um, but, yeah. So, I'm sorry I'm rambling about this fourth and one. Also, you outplayed the Seahawks for 55. Five minutes of that game. I would even venture to say, uh, oh yeah, 55 because you have the two minute drive. Um, so I actually say 56 minutes of that game. You overplayed. They scored 21 points in a minute and 53 seconds. 
And then they scored the other seven or six because it was twenty because they failed the two point conversion. You the other six points was scored in a minute and fifty seven second drive. So the scoring drives of the Seattle Seahawks were a total of four, not even four minutes. That is bad, and I'm sorry. Like, h- how do you have a complete and total meltdown? Okay, I'm going to move on because I'm upset with the Vikings. I, Of course, I'm happy with the Vikings. They lost as a Seahawks fan. But, like, also the Vikings, are you kidding me? And then, like, power rankings. Um, team to move up, or not move up, to stay the same, obviously, Detroit. <laughs> like, obviously, it's Detroit. They stay the same after a bye. Uh, then we got the Carolina Panthers, who are going to go ahead and move up four spots. After their win, they won three in a row. Christian McCaffrey is gone, and now they're winning games somehow. I don't know what it is. I don't know how it is, but they are being efficient. They're learning this offense. I'm happy for them. I don't know if they're going to make the playoffs this year, but I'm just happy for this team. They're doing well. They're keeping it up, and they are making things difficult, and that's what I want to see from a new team under a new coach. And this is, like, the only new team with a new coach that I feel somewhat confident in in a a week-to-week basis that they can play well, prepare well, and do well. I'm happy for this team. Hopefully they continue that. And we got Miami going up four spots as well. Miami, when you crush the 49ers the way you did, you've got hope for the season. You're two and three. Yes, I get that. And a lot of people are like, why are they seven? Like, why are they ahead of the Panthers who are three and two? It's like, well, they dominated. Um, and if they keep this momentum and keep those explosive plays going, they, they are a threat to do well. And I kind of, ex- I'm hoping that they do some decent things. I like things that I, I've, I've raved about this coach a bunch and I think they can do well. Uh, we'll see. Next we have the Arizona Cardinals. They moved down three despite their win against the, <clears throat> um, Jets. This is the Jets. I couldn't give you too much hope. I couldn't give you too much like, oh my gosh, and other teams just played better. Uh, you played the Jets. That's kind of the downfall of playing the Jets is you really have a chance to lower things and lower expectations. Next, we got the Tampa Bay Bucks dropping six after their horrendous loss to the Bears. The Bears, uh, uh, the biggest thing, the offensive line should stop committing penalties. Plain and simple. Brady has a right to be upset. But also, Brady needs to convert. You can't kick five field goals and be, like, mad at your t- team. Kicking five field goals is bad. <laughs> Plain and simple. You can't kick them. Um, and, yeah, that's that's what's dropping them right now is the amount of field goals they had to kick. Next is Chicago at 14 after their win. Again, offense looked terrible, but the defense is looking like they're going to try and carry. Um, I don't think, I think you'll see this team as you progress against harder opponents struggle a little bit more like that. I figured Tampa Bay would finish it off, but they did not. Um, And realistically, I'm not seeing greatness from this team. I'm seeing good from this team. Um... Next, we got Indianapolis. Indianapolis is going to move up one spot, literally due to the fact that the uh, Buccaneers fell hard on their face um, in the power rankings this week. Phillip needs to do better and play better. Um, I debated actually moving the Bears up above them, um, but... I just I want them to have a better resume. I want them to play well against uh and next week. They're in a they're in a challenge spot. So you or if you if if you will. So I will see how they play. Uh next week. Twelve, we got the Raiders. They move up three. Um they beat Kansas City. That's all you gotta say. I've been in this right area, I think, for them this year. This, like, yellow tier where they could make the playoffs, but they could falter and then fall. Um, 
And honestly, I want to see how this team kind of plays and what this team wants to do um, going into the next week. I, if they can be 4-2, and two, I'd be very happy for them. Um, but yeah, you beat the Chiefs. Yes, this, and I, yes, it's a divisional opponent. Um, so obviously it's going to be easier. But a divisional opponent at home, that's a hard win, especially when you're in one of the stadiums that can have fans. Good win. Um... For the Raiders. Next, we get the New Orleans Saints. They drop three spots. I think they're finally starting to show me personally what the kind of team they are. They get behind. They have to go come back and climb back. But unlike the Cowboys, they actually have the ability to do that. Um, so that's not a top ten team for me. I, as a team, I need a team to be able to have or show and display dominance. Saints aren't doing that this season, but they are a playoff caliber team, uh, but they need to show more dominance. Next, we got the Buffalo Bills after falling flat on their face, literally getting destroyed. Josh Norman, who's your new daddy? Um, holy cow. Um, I kept them in the top 10. A lot of people are going to be like, what the heck? Why'd you keep them in the top 10? They are still a top 10 team. Okay. You, you cannot sit here and tell me they're not a top 10 team after that. That's just one bad week against a team that had basically over like two weeks off um, to get to hyper analyze and prepare for you. Like it was going to it was uh, it was going to happen um, like it really it was uh, it just did not. Yeah, did not go the way that it was planned for. Buffalo, which is the eggs. <laughs> uh, next, we have the Cleveland Browns for the first time in the top 10. I think the Browns, um, if the Browns and Bills were to face each other, I feel like the Browns would would win, personally speaking. Um, I think the Browns are just playing at a high level. The only team they've lost to is the Baltimore Ravens, so it's not even like they lost to a bad team. Um, I want to see this team against some better opponents personally. Um uh actually I don't even need to say that because they just beat the Colts who are a good opponent. So they have proven that they are a real team. So I'm hoping that they continue this kind of trend of we're real, we're gonna do it, we're gonna kill it. Next we have the Tennessee Titans. Uh they move up three spots as well. Um yeah when you kill a good team like that you deserve to move up <laughs> that's plain and simple like you killed them this defense is underrated i want to see this defense continue to do better um they got this they can do it um next we got the los angeles rams moving up three spots as well the rams are literally they're legit they are you can't even tell me they're not um i'm hoping to see this team kind of continue to do better continue to do well um, but right now, as it stands, they are the team that is going to threaten the Seahawks. Um, personally speaking, I think a lot of teams can threaten the Seahawks, but, um, the Rams are a big threat to the Seattle Seahawks. Um, they're a tough team. They've gotten back to 2018 form and I will be interested to see how they play throughout the season. Next, we got the new England Patriots going up one spot, mainly because the Buffalo Bills faltered. That's literally it. Um, you know, they're on a buy. I didn't I don't like moving up teams or changing teams' position on a buy, but when the Buffalo Bills kind of fell on their face like they did, it was deserving of the drop, which moves them up. Uh they played the Broncos next week, so I don't expect them to lose. So I don't expect them to lose their spot. We have the Pittsburgh Steelers at five. I do believe the Pittsburgh Steelers are a great team. They're one of the few undefeateds left in the league. Uh, mentioning the undefeated Titans are there too. Um, so yeah, a couple undefeated teams. Next, we got the Seattle Seahawks. They they were in danger of moving down a spot. <laughs> Thank God Dan Hannon has them at six because holy hell, I don't know how you had them at six when the Bills just faltered and you keep them above the Seahawks. Like Dan Hannon, thank you for making my life so much easier. Uh, <laughs> 
so that I don't have the Seahawks at the lowest of any other power rankings, because a lot of people have them at one or two, and I just don't see them as the one and two yet. I see a team that almost lost to a team that was one and three, but they came back and found a way to win, which is admirable. I see a team that um defensively is getting better and in a in ways but also faltering in others the points per game is good but they're 32nd in yards um and 32nd in passing but they have a bye week to figure all this out um they have they are on pace right now to give up the most yards of any NFL team in any season Please tell me that's number one. Give me an argument to why the, a team that is on pace to give up the most yards in any NFL season should be number one. It, they shouldn't. But their offense and Russell Wilson is keeping them up in the top five. They are a really good football team. I just, I need to see that big performance. We could get that next week against the Carolina, or the um, Arizona Cardinals or the Carolina Panthers. But I will need, I'll be looking for that. Next, we got Baltimore. After beating their divisional rival badly, they're staying in the same spot. Um, it was the Bengals. <laughs> like, not a good quality opponent. I'm not going to move you up for that. Um, next, we have the Kansas City Chiefs dropping one spot after losing to the Raiders. I'm not going to harshly drop the Chiefs yet. They scored 30, but their defense gave up a lot. But it was a divisional opponent, and divisional opponents know each other. I don't like dropping a lot on a divisional opponent, but um, unless, you know, you lose your starting quarterback and, like, things falter and fall apart, um, and you give up 34 points against one of the lowest points-per-game ranked teams. Um, but, yeah, honestly, the Chiefs, I'm waiting on. I'm not going to move them down too much, but uh, if they lose another game, then, then that's where the drop will start occurring. Then we got the Green Bay Packers. They move up one. Obviously, they have to if the Chiefs move down. The Packers so far are just the overall best team in the NFL. They're like they're one of four undefeated teams left in the NFL. They had a bye week. They're about to like have some fun against another team. And honestly, it's gonna be a fun ride. I want to see kind of how they progress. Now, of course, we get to this every week. And it's the power shift games of the week. Uh, number one is going to be the Bears at the Panthers. If the Bears defense can hold up and play well, then congratulations. You kind of show that you're at least you're better. You're deserving of your spot. Uh, but if the Panthers win, then that's literally proof in the pudding right there that the bears aren't the team that we expected them to be or well it's they're more of the team we expected them to be um next obviously is going to be the cardinals and cowboys that's going to be a power shift game of the week as well because i feel like the cardinals really are a team that where we want to look at like hyper hyper actively um, I want to see this team play well against this Cowboys team that it's not that bad, but the Cowboys are at home again. I feel like they're at home like every five seconds of their life lately. I feel like oh, they weren't at home last, or no, they were at home last week. They literally got three home games in a row. What? They really did because the they beat the uh, Browns at home. Three home games in a row. Holy cannoli. That's crazy. That's crazy. They are at home for the third week in a row, and they've had four home games already to this point. Jeez. They did not leave Andy Dalton in a good spot. Uh, but, yeah, that's a power shift game of the week as well. Um, and the final power shift game of the week is going to be Chiefs-Bills. Um, the Bills, if they falter again against a good quality opponent, that's going to show who they are. Um, as a team, and if the Chiefs lose, then they also show that they're not, like, the second best team in the league, um, and that they have the re room to move down, um, that's a big power shift in the top 10, other than that, I hope you guys all have a wonderful rest of your day, I love every single one of you, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me during these power rankings videos, 
And I will see you guys in the next one. Love you all. Peace.